Today's lesson is on chords and arcs. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. We can use information about congruent parts of a circle or congruent circles to find information about other parts of a circle or circles. A chord is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. Segment PQ is a chord. Its related arc is arc PQ. The theorems and converses on the next couple slides confirm that if we know that chords, arcs, or central angles are congruent, then we know the other two parts are congruent. Theorem 12-4 states that within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent arcs. So if we know that angle AOB is congruent to angle COD, then arc AB is congruent to arc CD. Its converse states that within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent arcs have congruent central angles. So if we know that arc AB is congruent to arc CD, then we know that angle AOB is also congruent to angle COD. Theorem 12-15 states that within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent central angles have congruent chords. So if angle AOB is congruent to angle COD, then segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Its converse states that within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent chords have congruent central angles. So if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then angle BOA is congruent to angle COD. Theorem 12-6 states that within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent chords have congruent arcs. So if segment AB is congruent to segment CD, then arc AB is congruent to arc CD. Its converse states that within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent arcs have congruent chords. So if we know that arc AB is congruent to arc CD, then we know that segment AB is congruent to segment CD. In example one, we will use congruent chords. In the diagram, circle O is congruent to circle P. Given that segment BC is congruent to segment DF, what can you conclude? We know that in congruent circles, if chords are congruent, then the central angles are also congruent. So let's start with the statement that angle BOC is congruent to angle DPF. We also know that if the chords are congruent, their corresponding arcs are congruent. So we can conclude that arc BC is congruent to arc DF. Based on the given information, we can conclude that angle BOC is congruent to angle DPF, and that arc BC is congruent to arc DF. Pause the video and do U-try number one. In the diagram, circle O is congruent to circle P, and angle OBC is congruent to angle PDF. How can you show that angle BOC is congruent to angle DPF? From this, what else can you conclude? We know that the radii of each circle is going to be congruent. So segment OB is congruent to segment OC, which will also mean that segment PD is congruent to segment PF. With two congruent legs, we know that triangle BOC is an isosceles triangle. So angle OCB will be congruent to angle OBC. Since angle PDF is also isosceles, angle PFD will be congruent to angle PDF. By the third angle theorem, since two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, the third angles are also congruent. So angle BOC will be congruent to angle DPF. Since the central angles of, an of circles O and circle P are congruent, we know that chord BC is congruent to chord DF. So segment BC is congruent to segment DF, and arc BC is congruent to arc DF. Remember, when we measure the distance from a point to a line, we measure the length of the segment from the point that is perpendicular to that line. In theorem 12-7, 
it states that within a circle or in congruent circles, chords that are equidistant from the center or centers are congruent. Because segment OE is congruent to segment OF, it's telling us that segment BA is the same distance from point O that segment CD is. Since segment BA and segment CD are the same distance from the center of the circle, the chords are congruent. So segment BA will be congruent to segment CD. The converse to theorem 12-7 states that within a circle or in congruent circles, congruent chords are always equidistant from the center. So, if we know that segment BA is congruent to segment CD, they will be equidistant to the center. So, that would tell us that segment EO is congruent to segment FO. In example 2, we will find the length of a chord. What is the length of segment RS in circle O? Since the length of segment OQ is 9 units, that tells us that segment PR is 9 units away from the center. Since segment RS is also 9 units from the center, the chords are going to be equal length. Since segment PQ is 12.5, segment RQ is also 12.5 because of the congruent marks. The length of segment PR will equal 12.5 plus 12.5. So the length of segment PR is 25 units. Since segment PR is the same distance away from the center of segment RS, they are congruent. If we substitute 25 in for the length of segment PR, then we see that the length of segment RS is also 25. Pause the video and do you try number two. In this diagram, we can see that the length of this chord is 18 plus 18, or 36 units long. Since this chord is also 36 units long, we know that each chord is the same distance from the center of the circle. So we know that x will equal 16. So because the chords are congruent, they are equidistant from the center of the circle. The converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem has special applications to a circle and its diameters, chords, and arcs. Let's take a look at the next three theorems. Theorem 12-8 states that in a circle, if a diameter is perpendicular to a chord, then it bisects the chord and its arcs. So since segment AB is the diameter and it is perpendicular to chord CD, then segment CE is congruent to segment ED and arc CA is congruent to arc AD. Theorem 12-9 states that in a circle, if a diameter bisects a chord that is not the diameter, then it is perpendicular to the chord. Since segment AB bisects segment CD, and we can see that segment CE is congruent to segment ED, then segment AB is perpendicular to segment CD. Theorem 12-10 states that in a circle, the perpendicular bisector of a chord contains the center of the circle. So since AB, since segment AB is perpendicular to segment CD and it bisects segment CD, segment AB must contain the center and is therefore the diameter. In example 3, we will use diameters of chords. An archaeologist found pieces of a jar. She wants to find the radius of the rim of the jar to help guide her as she reassembles the pieces. What is the radius of the rim? To begin, we want to trace a piece of the rim. Now we want to draw two chords. From here, we will construct the perpendicular bisectors of each chord. With your compass on each end point of the chord, we're going to construct two small arcs above and below the chord. Now we can draw in that perpendicular bisector. With your compass point on each end of the red chord, we want to construct two small arcs above and below the red chord. Now use your straight edge to draw in the perpendicular bisector. Where the perpendicular bisectors intersect, that will be the center of your circle. To get the distance from the center to the edge, or the radius, we want to use a ruler to measure. Using a ruler, we can see that the radius of this circle is 4 centimeters. 
Pause the video and do you try number three. What is the radius of the coin? Let's begin by drawing two chords. With our compass point on each end point of the blue cord, we'll do two arcs above and below the cord. Now draw in the perpendicular bisector of the cord. Putting your compass point on each end point of the red cord, draw two arcs above and below the red cord. Now use your straight edge to draw in the perpendicular bisector. Where the perpendicular bisectors intersect, that is the center of your coin. Use a ruler to measure the distance from the center to the edge, so the radius will be 1.3 centimeters or 13 millimeters. In example four, we will find measures in a circle. What is the value of each variable to the nearest tenth? In part A, since segment KN is part of the diameter of the circle and it is perpendicular to segment LM, it will bisect segment LM. Therefore, segment LN and segment NM will each be 7 or half of 14 centimeters. Since triangle KLN is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of segment KL. 7 squared plus 3 squared will equal r squared. Rounded to the nearest tenth, the square root of 58 is approximately 7.6 centimeters. In part B, we can see that segment BA is an auxiliary line. It has been drawn in to assist us. Since segment BA is also a radius and segment BE is a radius with a length of 15, we know that segment BA also has a length of 15. Because segment BC starts at the center, it is part of the diameter. Because it bisects segment AF, we know that it is perpendicular to the diameter. So angle ACB is a right angle, giving us a right triangle, triangle ABC. So we know that 11 squared plus y squared will equal 15 squared. Rounded to the nearest tenth, the square root of 104 is approximately 10.2 units. Pause the video and do you try number four. In part B, how does the auxiliary segment BA make the problem simpler to solve? Since segment BA is the hypotenuse of triangle ACB, and we know it is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of Y. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions regarding the lesson check, be sure to ask me in class. If you're feeling confident, go ahead and do the challenge. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal in the scale. Have you climbed any higher on the scale from where you were when we began the lesson? If you did the challenge, here's the answer.